is 10 past 6 here on Port FM with me, your host, Papla. Uh, how was your weekend? What a beautiful tune that it is, eh? Uh, I'm not a music DJ. I love music, eh? And I must say, uh, I like all spheres of music. I have a batanga, I have a little bit of uh, opera music. So uh, I, I just love music. I love rock, I like punk, I like... Uh, romantic music, but I must say, the pote and pana, the ama piano, it never really touched me. So I think on that fear, I'm a bit out. But I like songs and music that makes that makes sense. That that there's a a message. All music have a message, but most music are written for love stories. That I also love. You know, uh, there's so many beautiful songs about love, the expression of love, and I love those songs. But songs that, that, that touch me, you know, songs like this one of Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. It says, wake up everybody. No more sleeping in bed. No more backward thinking time for thinking ahead. The world has changed so very much from what it used to be. There is so much hatred, war and poverty. This song, I can promise you, was written probably in the 60s or so. But those words are still relevant today. Now, those are the type of songs that uh, that capture me, that, 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 that have that meaning for me. And the next line, I'm going to only read that one. It says, wake up all the teachers. Time to teach a new way. If you look at the world around us, you know, things have changed so, so, so Many things have changed so much that it is not like the old days that we used to do things. I mean, there are schools that you have to have a tablet, you have to have a, a, a laptop. You don't come with books and heavy stuff and all those stuff. Unfortunately, our kids in our schools here are not on that level, but that doesn't mean the other kids are not on that level. But everything changed. And sometimes we are stuck in our old ways of thinking. We think I want to finish school and I must study to a, for a degree and then I must look for a job preferably in the, in the government so that I can have a job for the rest of my life. But things have changed so drastically and, and dramatically. Uh, we're going to speak today with uh, about mobile device distribution and uh, repairs association. But, but after that, I just want to pick on the artificial intelligence and how it change our lives now and that thing is like two failed fires or ten failed fires it just swept around and it and it just make things easier which make things more difficult for us so the song say you must wake up wake up everybody no more sleeping in bed you have to think differently you have to think out of the box you can't think like our parents used to think finish your school, get the de degree, go to government, work there for the rest of your life, and whatever. Things have changed, people. Skills with your hands are the skills that you can do for longer. Tonight, we have the absolute honor of speaking to Mr. Yolisa Kiha of the South African Mobile Devices Distributors and Repairers Association. The acronym is SAMDRA, S-A-M-D-D-R-A. -D so that's a long name. That's South African Mobile Devices Distributors and Repairers Association. So we're going to refer to it as SAMDRA. Sir, we have the absolute pleasure of having you in studio tonight. Good evening and how are you? Good evening, good evening, Pabla. Um, good evening to your listeners as well. Um, very well. Uh, it's been a busy day, busy weekend for me. But I'm glad to, to, to notice that from music to your outlook at what should be happening uh, in this day and age, we are 100% aligned. I could even sit in for your AI <laughs> interview, but that's fine. <laughs> no, thank you very much. I'm, and, I'm very and, and thank you for doing the effort of coming in studio. I know it's difficult sometimes. With AI, we should have had it on air, on a phone, on a line, and so forth. But, you know, just as I appreciate... Uh, uh, m meaningful music I appreciate that that the guests come into my studio and sit opposite me and we have a discussion because this is what we do here we have a discussion we share knowledge and we see where can we can meet each other and where the listeners 
can also learn something, hopefully, and we spread the message of information. This is the purpose of my show here on Port FM. So, uh, sir, you are the chairman of, of, of Sandra. Tell us a little bit more about Sandra. I must say, I never knew there exist association like that. So it is quite new. When the producer of the show, our station manager, Makulin, uh, called me and uh, tell me about you and the interview, I was very excited because the first thing I do, I go up and read and Google and see, and I never knew there was uh, such a thing as uh, a Sandra. Thank, thank you very much, and, and, and thank you very much for, for, for hosting us and, and give us, giving us an opportunity to, to be able to speak to your listeners about Samdra and what we do. Um, in the nutshell, Samdra itself, which is the South African Mobile Device Distributors and Repairers Association, it is a professional body. It is an NPC, uh, to a certain extent an NGO as well. Um, it is formed in the nutshell going forward to professionalize the mobile device industry, uh, especially the mobile device repair industry. I'll go to wide distributors in the, in, in the, uh, in the short while. What do, what do I mean by professionalizing? If a South African now goes to um, a shop to fix a mobile device, if they're not going to go through the OEMs, which is your Samsung shops or Telcom, they're likely going to go to a shop where they will find, find a foreign national which is doing the job of the fixing. In more cases than one, there would be no recourse. If something goes wrong, uh, we've ho heard horror stories about uh, people's device being switched, uh, being uh, um, components being switched for um, uh, lesser quality ones, um, where people took devices that were working, they came back working, and there's nothing you can do about it because there's no association that really uh, um, looks at the industry. So that's the first part, and that's where we're going in the end. But we've got immediate problems in the country. Um, when we looked at, for instance, the, the when we looked at, at different types of value chains and what's happening in South Africa as the ICT SMME chamber, which I also run, which formed Samdra, we, we noticed that a number of value chains, just in the same way that the Spaza shops have gone, have literally the entire industry ends up being dominated and run by foreign nationals. There's a number of issues with that. Let me take the first, uh, first the obvious one, jobs and economic growth. Um, if you look at this industry, it's over 50 billion rand industry. And mostly what do foreign, foreign nationals do? They remit the money outside, so the money doesn't circulate in the, in, the, in the economy. Secondly, they hardly hire South Africans. This means jobs that could easily be done uh, by South Africans in this joblessness environment is actually being done by foreign nationals, um, which uh, in the most cases, even the money that they earn from this is not being used in South Africa. So it's a double problem when it comes to the impact of the economy and the impact on the jobs. Uh, and another one which, which is not yet understood is a, is, a, is, a, is a national security issue. We've got a law in South Africa called RICA, which is meant to protect the use of these mobile devices um, in that if you use a mobile device, it can be tracked. We know who it belongs to. If people end up with um, SIM cards that are not recut, they could be able to commit crimes and we would not be able to trace those phones. Um, if I lose my phone, I would block it. But if somebody who knows how, they can unblock these phones. Mm -hmm. So there's also a criminal element that can go with a, an industry of this nature, and if you start talking about e AI and cybersecurity and things that can be conducted using these um, um, sort of devices, whether it's a laptop or a cell phone, um, it would be you trace the IP address, but you end up to, to no one at the, on the other end. So there is quite a lot of um, security um, that that is, is is dealt with it. So going back to the D, uh, we're saying we are a mobile. Um, we are South African Mobile Device Distributors and Repairers Association. The reason for that is that when we looked at the entire value chain of the mobile device, all the way from um, the, the, uh, the design of the components, the design of the devices themselves, manufacturing, to um, e-waste, meaning now at the end of life, 
um, we looked at where we could enter, which would be easy for us and South Africans to be able to make meaningful impact in the economy, in the in the economy, and also in in jobs. We realized that the mobile repair industry would be the easiest for us to enter. But if you do the repairs without getting the spares at the correct pr price, getting the distribution of the components and accessories that go with that also at the correct price point, you would end up at the very same issue that we are having with Spaza shops. So in order to ensure that we don't only train young people for the purpose of training, because the young people have been trained to death in South Africa and they end up with no jobs. In fact, we have lots of graduates that have no jobs. Mm. So this program is not just about training uh, young people. It's about making sure that when they enter the program, being trained, they are able to be trained how to run a business and being assisted to open and run one. And those that do not have the uh, the, uh, the aptitude to run a business can then work for others or they can be uh, they can get a job elsewhere. But the difference with the program is that they will now have a certificate which is NQF uh, um, um, accredited and to that extent we've worked very closely with the likes of MICTCTA which will, do, which will deal with the accreditation part and we've developed a qualification with them. Uh, on mobile uh, device repair. I'm also a, a, a board member, by the way, at MICT CETA. We've um, entered into a partnership with CIFA and CEDA um, so that when we're done with the training element, they can be taken through a process of being trained um, to, so that they can be able to operate. So uh, it's that sort of we believe in these collaborations because we do not believe that uh, one entity can be able to solve this type of a problem. Hence, we are always seeking for meaningful partnerships and meaningful collaborations, but in a coordinated manner. You don't want a scenario like I've seen recently where mobile device repair is a buzzword, but you end up with people which are not adequately trained, which in my view, I feel they would defeat the very same purpose that we want to achieve. Because if you go to uh, the new trained South African uh, young people and they mess up your phone, you might think you're better off with the Pakistanis anyway. So, 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 so ours is to let's coordinate this as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an industry body and make sure that we can really deliver highly trained um, um, young people which you can be comfortable to take your, cell, your, your iPhone, which is worth probably 25000 too, for them to fix because we have a stamp of approval uh, from Sandra that says this person is trained. And that's really our role in the, in the, in the long run, mm -hmm. is to make sure that you as a, as a, as a, as a client, you have some recourse, um, you've got assurance that a Sandra accredited uh, repairer will fix your phone properly, uh, they adhere to a particular code of conduct, you know uh, through Sandra where they get the, their components, um, and if they go wrong, you can never be sure about every human being, you at least have recourse to go to Sandra and Sandra would be able to do something about that. So, so that's really what Sandra is about, is to coordinate this industry so that not only it would benefit South Africans in terms of jobs, but it also benefits the clients in terms of assurance and making sure that we can move from there to other areas of this value chain and continue to benefit South Africans and growing jobs internally instead of giving away jobs that young South Africans should be able to do. Wow, wow, what a mouthful. That is what I want on the show. I am just a facilitator. The information and everything should come from my guest. And I think up to now, we are doing extremely well. Is Sandra uh, um, part of the Department of Communication? Not really. We, 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 we are in partnership first with the, with the Ministry of HESI, the entire ministry. So that is the Department of, um, the, the, uh, Department of Higher Education and the Department of Science and Innovation um, through Minister Blayton Zimande, who is really um, a, a, a big cheerleader of Sandra and what we are trying to do. Um, that partnership obviously extends to MICT CETA, um, which has a partnership with um, with 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 Sandra. S Sandra itself was formed by the ICT SMME chamber. That chamber was itself formed by the department 
uh, then, which is, was the Department of Communication. The launch of Sandra was launched by the then Minister of DCTT, uh, which is Communication, and uh, Minister Blade Zimande, which is was Stellan Dabeni uh, Abrahams. So, and uh, to this extent, we've also um, uh, in negotiations with uh, uh, DCTT, which is uh, the Department of Communication, to enter into a partnership so that we can make sure that all these programs around cell phone repairs are not, um, as I was mentioning earlier, where we do different things and end up not achieving what we, 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 we are trying to achieve. We've got a new minister, a new deputy minister, and we're working very well with them. And uh, soon I'm hoping that we will have a formal partnership with the Department of Communications. But there is a formal partnership with MICT CETA, there is a formal partnership with the Department of Small Businesses through CEDA and CIFA. Good. It is 27 past 6 here on Port FM. I am in conversation with the, the chairperson of the South African Mobile Devices Distributors and Repairs Association, shortly known as Sandra, and uh, we are taking a short break uh, we'll be back after this song by Lira it is 18.33 here on Port FM with me Papla on the host it's Monday the 22nd that's exactly a week after payday and I told you last time I like paydays on a Monday now. <laughs> we carry on the conversation here with the chairperson of Sandra he has said, shared so much information that I was looking at him in awe with all the things that he's saying. You know, uh, sometimes it needs a dissection of the mind, but it is being recorded. Uh, later on, it will be available on the platform. Uh, I'm not sure when. Facebook. On the Facebook, on our Facebook uh, platform, and uh, DJ Black will compile uh, the insert that we have today. Uh, I'm also here uh, with my fellow uh, presenter, uh, Prof. How are you today, Prof? I'm fine, thank you, sir. Prof is one of our young, young men here. We are blessed with the very young people who show interest in, in radio, and uh, that, that, that is good, you know. I only discovered radio very late in my, in my life, and, uh, and I regret that, especially talk radio. But uh, I'm here, and it's never too late to learn. So uh, we're also going to... Prof also going to have uh, a question or two there to answer to the chairman. Okay, good evening everyone. Uh, first of all, good evening Papla and good evening uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just have a few questions that I would like to ask um, you, sir. Is that um, if you do not mind, because up until now I'm sure everyone has has heard it all about um, how, uh, the, the, the e-repairs, right? And, um, they obviously want to know more on how we could actually access and even apply for these courses which are accredited and will obviously benefit us in terms of uh, our young people in terms of communication and in terms of i mean truth be told this knowledge is power that's a fact and the more knowledge a person gains the more open-minded they become about life and um, one wouldn't want to turn down this opportunity. So uh, I would like to um, please ask, um, sir, if you do not mind, could you please tell us a bit more about this course, right? And now I'm, I'm talking, that I'm, I'm requesting this in light of you being a bit more detailed about this course, about the duration of the course, where this course will be hosted, um, and where, where should the applicants actually apply for this course? There are more questions that I would like to ask upon that, too, but um, I, I firstly, we first need to be briefed about um, right. upon the mm. cause. Could you please tell us a bit more about the cause? All right. So, so the the course currently is a an extract um, of of the national qualification. It's it's a national qualification in electronics. So we've taken out certain modules. Um, from that to form the cost that we currently have. But we've done more than that um, in a sense that we've worked with MICT CETA to develop a specific, a specific qualification, which is uh, NQF Level 4, um, which is a mobile device repair technician. Um, that course, uh, the way we run it is typically, uh, it will take about two to three months, um, uh, which is split in half. 
Um, the half, the first half would be theory. Once you're done with theory, you would then do practicals. Why are we taking that long? It's the same issue that I was dealing with earlier in that we, we not only, when we say mobile device first, we're not just talking about cell phones. Um, the, the, the sort of skill that you will learn from here is you'd be able to fix virtually any mobile device that um, any mobile device is anything that you carry on with a battery and be able to use, whether it's a laptop, wow. uh, um, cell phone, um, um, wearables, and all these devices. So that's the aim. So, so, so the length of the course uh, uh, um, is meant to give you grounded uh, knowledge on electronics in general so that you will be able, this device change um, uh, very quickly. The technologies change very quickly. Mm -hmm. So if you focus on just training a child or not a child, a learner, just to open a current device now, uh, a couple year fr from now, these devices have changed completely. Um, how the motherboard looks has changed completely. So you really want to have them properly grounded so that when you get out a new, uh, when, when when you graduate them from the course, you get you get somebody who's really who really understands the basics of electronics so that they would be able to fix not just this device. For instance, we want them, if you give them a, 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 a set-top box, we want them to be able to fix that uh, because it's an electronic device. And that's, 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 that's the aim. And, um, okay. Um, may please I please prof. ask one more question just upon that, uh, before we um, resume yeah. or continue. Um, may I ask, is, is this only for cell phones or are they basically for computers as well? Because the reason why I'm asking this is because um, there is definitely a kind of linkage between uh, cell phones mm -hmm. and, and, and other e-devices like your, your laptop, things like your computer, things like um, other e-devices that, that one can think of. So will this course only be uh, aimed at the repairs of cell phones only and no other e-device in, in this line? Yeah, and, and that's exactly what I was saying. If you uh, the, the mobile device, we mean including a laptop and a tablet and, yes. and things like that. But if you can fix a laptop, you'll definitely be able to fix a computer. a computer. It's more complicated to be able to fix a laptop than it is to be able to fix a, a desktop box. So, And that's really why... We, we the cost is really that long so that we make sure that you have people who are really, really yes. properly trained to be able to uh, fix your device and fix it properly. If they can't, mm -hmm. they then uh, should then fo uh, forward it to a more specialized uh, um, center that would enable to do that. And that's something also that we are working on as part of the distribution network that we're dealing with. So yes, certainly they should be able to fix a computer. Obviously there would be a limit in terms of things that they can fix. Um, this is a three months uh, course, at least on our side, um, but it forms a good basis for yes. them to move yeah. yes, to other courses. Yes, because for instance, we've already started developing a, a course which will be a, an NQF level five. On top of this one, this one becomes an entry level to that one, uh, to the NQF level five, which would be at the level of metric. Uh, I think we call that an engineer, mobile device engineer. Um, that course would enable them to even go further as a, 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 um, a repair technician. And from there onwards, they, they would get uh, a certificate that would enable them to go to university or TVET or any other higher education. Okay, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's just becoming more and more interesting. Yeah. I, I have to admit that this is exciting. Yeah. So um, may I ask, can, will this qualification be internationally recognized? So in other words, if I decide from now I want to go and live in um, Los Angeles, for an example, and of course, over there they also use cell phone devices and they also use laptops, etc., etc., etc. So would you be able to take this knowledge which you have acquired over here and actually use it um, internationally, or would be would it be called a limited edition? <laughs> I see why they call you a professor. <laughs> yes, it is. This is hence we went via MICTCITA. MICTCITA qualifications um, are SAQWA um, accredited qualifications. SAQWA is part of international bodies that enable. That's how universities, that's why I can live with my degree in South Africa and go into an honors or a master's in Harvard. It's because that degree is uh, accredited by SAQWA, which mm -hmm. is the South African Qualifications Authority. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so because it's a SAQWA qualification done through MICT CETA, you would be virtually able to go anywhere in the world and get the same recognition that you would get in South Africa from the course. All right. Um, the last three, sir. Um, three questions. Who, 
who is allowed to apply for this um, for this course and their age criteria. That's the the, 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 the request for the ages between which age to which age, and also the criteria for um, for for them to be able to apply for this. What is it that they have to have um, in terms of pre-education before they can actually apply for this course? Yeah. It's it's a it's a tricky one the age one on our side, mm. um, however because we are government uh, funded, we we first need to align to government priorities, and government priorities now are youth and people with disabilities. So those would those who are youth by the government definition of what youth is would get first priority, but um, from where we're sitting in Sandra. Those who show, even if they're older than you, uh, the youth range, those who really show that they want to do the course and they're really hungry, because there's a lot of people through our history in South Africa who never have had these opportunities. Mm -hmm. And if they're hungry enough and, and they're able to learn and they show ability to be able to learn, we, we really have no issues being able to enroll them onto the course. Um, we typically would uh, um, uh, prefer somebody has metric, a little bit of understanding in of mathematics or arithmetics, because remember you're still going to do um, um, an electronics course. You need to be able to calculate and and, and understand your basic mm -hmm. science um, um, rules. However, again, that is not a definitely not a university. It's not a definite role. If we need to interview you and figure out whether you would be able to to do the course. Um, we certainly would, would be able to look at those exceptional um, um, circumstances. So in the end, from us, we, we would prefer uh, youth because that's what government is focusing on. Uh, there's serious joblessness on the, on the, on the side of the youth. Uh, and because the funders want to go, that's where we would uh, go. But again, there is no one really, really closed out. If, if, if somebody shows the necessary... Uh, basic skills to be able to go to the course, we would certainly take them on. And especially those who are really hungry, whether they're youth or not, uh, we tend to, to, to make those exceptions. Okay. We, we have a question here from Mr. Ali. He asked, do cell phone repairers have to be licensed? The reason for my question is that most Pakistanis don't have qualifications and learn how to repair cell phones when they arrive in South Africa. That is so true. I ask a Pakistani in, in Sunnyside where I work, how come all of you can repair cell phones? And his answer was, no, we don't come here uh, with the knowledge from our hometown. We learn it here. But mm -hmm. anyway, do they have to be licensed? Uh, no, not currently in South Africa. There are no regulations uh, that regulate the industry. Uh, there is no policy that regulates the industry. That's exactly the reason we have formed Sandra. Um, so once we have the necessary, because we had to start somewhere, we decided let's start by building this network of South African-based repairers. Because if we were to go to government now and lobby that there must be a license, you will have nowhere to fix your phone. So, so we first have to have the, the, the South Africans fixing the phones. And then part of what we plan to do is to do exactly uh, what, what the listener is saying, to make sure that there's some form of a license. And obviously, we would give an accreditation. But as it stands, it will be up to you uh, as a user whether you want to use the Sandra accredited or not. But at some point, we would want to get the industry regulated. But obviously, when you regulate an industry, there must be an industry to regulate. And we are forming the industry, organizing the industry, so that when we go to government and say, yeah, now we need these regulations to protect our clients as South Africans, to protect uh, um, uh, the, 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 the South African repairers. Uh, we at least have repairers to go with. So that's exactly one of the reasons Sandra was formed. Okay. Uh, listeners, this is free skills. You know, I mentioned uh, in my opening that the world has changed a lot. That go and look for a job, for an admin job that is, is not going to happen for everyone anymore. What's going to happen is people with skills are going to be able to survive longer. And, you know, one thing leads to another. I like what the chair said. This is basic electronics. You know, <laughs> I have opened electronics when I was very young. I was, you know, last time. 
<laughs> and you see those things, you don't know what it is. But in my earlier life, I worked at an electronic company and there was a thing called a resistor. That resistor got different colors on it. And every color represents a value. And you have to go to the training school for two weeks and then you have to pass the test. There's a lot of things. The resistor is one of the things. But what I'm trying to say is that is a basic electronic skill so that you understand. Every day on our WhatsApp groups, we look for people who can repair TVs. Mm -hmm. And there's basically mm -hmm. uh, nobody. Mm -hmm. You know, and people who repair the TVs are untrustworthy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And some people just take chances. They mm -hmm. just have a meter and a soldering iron and whoops, there they go. Try to fix your TV and they cause more damage. Yeah, because right. they don't understand the basics of the PC board, of the electronics. Today's TVs are much more complicated than the old ones. With those big resistors and uh, all those ICs and all those other things. But today you can fix it actually earlier. A, 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 a board for the sound might be cheaper than it was those years. Those years maybe it had 50 different electronic pieces on it. But now it's just a board with two electronic pieces representing all that 50. You replace the board, you solder it on, voila. You are in the finals. So this is free skills and it's an NQF level 4. So don't sit at home doing nothing. Maybe you were matric this year, last year, uh, not this year, last year, year before, two years, but you sit, still sit at home doing nothing. No, I don't like electronics. No, I don't like fixing phones. Come and when you come, be dedicated. Learn to complete anything that you start in life. Because that is the most regrets that most people have, including myself, of not finishing things that you've started. So if you come, be dedicated. Come to learn, man. Come to grasp your peace in society to say, I have this skill. You must say, I'm going to be the best in that class. And I'm going to the best student. I'm going to get A's. And I am going to start this business. This is a platform for me. To be able to empower me to, to work for me because it ain't working for your parents to work for uh, uh, a boss and a full-time admin job the whole day being frustrated get paid once a month and voila when you f check five days down the line you pay is little but when you work for yourself doesn't matter what work you do you can make little money but you can achieve more so chairperson Thank you so very much uh, for the information. The, 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 the course will be held in Istra somewhere. The venue not yet determined. That, that, that's correct. Um, um, and also just for the uh, your, your listeners, we for the Gauteng program, which is um, sponsored by the Gauteng Economic Development together with MI City CETA, we still have spaces uh, opened here and Lodium. Um, and for people to apply, and that's closing on the 31st um, of, of May. Um, we are going to have other programs, as I've said. Uh, obviously, these depend on, on funding. If you miss uh, uh, this, this intake, there will be other opportunities for you, and you can um, follow that on our website, uh, which is uh, samdra.org.za, or our social media um, um, platforms, and they would typically be just Samdra. Okay, if the closing date is 31st May, when does the course start? In, in, in two weeks, because we have to do the preparations, yeah. the, the onboarding, um, and, and all those processes that are required by MICTCTA, including the induction. Um, so it will probably take about two weeks or so. There's an online registration process on the website. The website is Sandra, S A M D D R A, dot org, org dot Z A. Correct, yes. Yes, so just go there. If you struggle, uh, let me know. I will be in contact with them uh, to, to sort you out. So, Mr. Chairman, is there anything that we left out that you think we need to talk about? No, no, thank you very much. Um, um, it's a pleasure to be here. And, and uh, again, we appreciate the time to be able to talk to your listeners. And, uh, and really, I would just urge them that when these opportunities come, yes. they are for them. They must uh, take advantage of them. Uh, you've also mentioned that uh, they are free. Ordinarily, they, these courses, uh, exactly. people go and pay to, exactly. 
to get these courses. But thank you to our partners, MICT CETA, uh, the Department of Economic Development in Gauteng. Uh, they have foot the bill um, for them to study. So, and, and these opportunities for these free courses of this nature are not going to last forever. So exactly. if I was still at that age, I would, I would jump at them whenever I see them. So um, thank you very much for also emphasizing that on your side. The pleasure is mm. all ours. And uh, from mm. our producer... Thank you very much, Port FM Cares. We, we go out of our way, and Makulin specifically, go out of our way to get information and opportunities like this so that the community can be helped because unemployment is all over, all over the world. It's not an easterest thing, but, you know, she tries to, 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 to see where she can help. And from our side, sir, management of Port FM, we appreciate you. May God bless you with your good work, and uh, you will have the best students in Port. We will not disappoint you, and they will all qualify, have the NQF4, and hopefully go th for the NF NQF5. There is also, before you go, just it is not just about the training. There is also entrepreneurial skills yes. involved, isn't it? That's correct. That's okay. correct. That's where Sandra and Sifa comes in to teach you how to run a business. And, and with those skills, you can run any business. That's it doesn't even have to be the self, the, uh, the, the mobile device repairs. And mm. with, with, with information and knowledge, the more you have, the better. The better. Mm. And once you, I have seen in life, once you do one thing and you're diligent to it, you're dedicated, new opportunities come your way. It is always like that in life. That doesn't matter what. You you dedicated to selling acha, but you dedicated, you make it and you make it nice and the same way you do it and people are buying. Somebody will come and say, why don't you sell this? At hmm. Bring a hundred bottles, I'll sell it at my work or 50 or 20 or so. Why don't I, I know that manager of, of that chain store? I can speak to him because I like your acha. I love it. I can see you in business. And voila, there, your acha can be countrywide distributed but it needs dedicated and it needs uh, effort from your side life is not easy but we can make it easier by upskilling ourselves and making sure that we have the knowledge to survive in this beautiful cruel world thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you prof thank you sir mm -hmm.